Loneliness is a feeling that can creep up on anyone at any stage in life and in various ways regardless of circumstances. Today let's explore the complexities of loneliness and how it might affect our lives. It is important to recognize and understand this emotion, what we call loneliness, not just for ourselves, but for people around us and for the well-being of our loved ones, because you might find that the more you understand it, you realize that people who you are close to might be feeling lonely. We talk a lot about globalization. We live in a modern interconnected world. We often find ourselves surrounded by countless online connections and virtual friends. Social media definitely connects us to our near and dear ones and allows us to make new friends as well. Not only that, we learn from each other through these different platforms. And of course, during the pandemic, social media and these online platforms were the only way of personal and professional connection and kept productivity going during a very difficult time. Now, many individuals like me remain in touch with their parents through social media on a regular basis. So there are lots of advantages of being connected online. However, the paradox of our time is that we can still feel incredibly alone, even in the midst of all the digital noise and constant notifications. Social media, while it connects us in many ways, it can also foster feelings of inadequacy or isolation, especially when we spend too much time on it. The lack of genuine connection, our busy lifestyles, societal pressures, they all contribute to a sense of disconnection or the real connection with other human beings. Now, on the other hand, let's also address the misconception that loneliness is solely about being physically alone. Actually, that's not true. It's more about the perception of isolation, where one feels disconnected from others on an emotional and a meaningful way. Now, you might find yourself in a crowded room with thousands of people or loads of followers online, but yet you might experience profound loneliness. While we have constant distractions, it's easy to lose sight of what truly matters. That is authentic human connections that are meaningful. And of course, all research tells us that meaningful, for meaningful connections are key to our happiness. Remember that loneliness is a subjective experience and all of us experience it differently and there are different reasons why we may feel lonely. Now, spending time with oneself is very important as well and it's healthy to, for, to spend time with self-reflection, self-development, but that's very different from loneliness. Feeling lonely can arise from a variety of internal and external factors. So today, let's understand what these factors are and please write in the comment box if they apply to you. Number one, lack of social connections. Now, when individuals lack meaningful connections or support systems, they can feel isolated and lonely. Now, this can occur either if there is geographical distance from loved ones or difficulty forming new relationships or even lack of close friends and family. Similarly, social isolation can occur in situations when individuals may be living alone, say, or working remotely, or they are homebound because they have a physical illness or a disability. Secondly, individuals can become lonely during key transitions in life, like moving home, moving to a new city or a new country, starting a new job, children leaving home, going through a breakup is another important reason why individuals feel lonely. And during the transition, when they are adjusting to their new circumstances, there is a void or a loss or grief where the old connections are loosening up a little bit. Take the example of breakup. That place was occupied by the other person, which and there's a void over there. So obviously individuals feel lonely. Um, in, during that time, we also find it difficult to invest emotionally in new connections. Another reason is unfulfilled emotional needs. Now, I see so many people who are in relationships, but their emotional needs are not being met because humans have a fundamental need for intimacy, a sense of belonging. And when these are not fulfilled, it can lead to feelings of isolation and loneliness. People find themselves battling feelings of loneliness despite having a family or, or partners and they may then blame their partner for feeling lonely rather than understand their own emotional needs 
and understanding that sometimes all emotional needs may not be met from one relationship and people need other other avenues like friends or hobbies and they need to invest in themselves like that. Another reason is psychological and biological factors. They can also contribute to loneliness. Now, these could be, for example, low self-esteem or social anxiety or depression. In all these conditions, individuals ability to engage in social interactions and maintain meaningful relationships is 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 hampered, which means it leads to feelings of loneliness. Often in conditions like obsessive compulsive disorder, an individual is so engrossed in their rituals that they spend a lot of time just doing that and they feel lonely. There are certain neurodiverse conditions like autism spectrum disorder where people have different social batteries. Again, certain changes like hormonal changes like menopause can lead to feelings of loneliness. Another factor is cultural and social factors. Now, social, societal pressures, cultural influences, they can all impact on loneliness. People compare themselves to others. They strive for unrealistic standards. They feel disconnected. In this, you know, sometimes it's because of this fast-paced, digitally driven world. And we, we find ourselves comparing to each other, which means we can feel lonely. A good example would be photos on Facebook. How often do you look at your friend's photos on Facebook and say, wow, you know, I wish I was there. Again, perceptions of how others feel about us can also increase our feelings of loneliness. Another reason is work-life balance. When we lose that balance, um, it, it becomes difficult to, to avoid feelings of loneliness. Um, it's almost like, you know, we say having an affair with work. Individuals who are constantly working, they can become quite lonely. Let me give you an example of Tia, who, who started her own business when her children left home. She became so engrossed in her business that when her children would then come home, she didn't have time for them and she felt quite lonely. Now, she we discussed this and she argued that Actually, the business kept her going when her children left home. So how can she get that balance? Ultimately, it is about the imbalance in different aspects of life. Another example of Leela, who so obsessed with, her, with keeping the house actually spick and span that she felt quite lonely because she was missing out on other things. Another reason is indulgence in alcohol or other substances, including uh, hobbies. It's almost like having an affair with these hobbies or these substances, which means that that emotional space is occupied and in the longer term, in, people can feel lonely. Another reason is personality. Now, some individuals, they drive others away and it might be a good time to reflect on one's own mind lens, which I call the prism through which we view the world. Now, do you understand why you view an experience in a certain way? What are your past traumas? What are your insecurities? What are your attachment styles? And why do you behave in certain ways in relationships? Why do we express anger or other emotions in certain ways that it drives people away? It's really important what keeps our connections healthy and what, what makes us feel lonely. How do we manage the changing landscape in relationships? Are we anxiously attached? Are we codependent? Are we clingy? Are we avoidant? Now, all these can lead to hurtful behaviors and ultimately lead to feelings of loneliness. Now, Lucy was anxious and clingy. She wanted intimacy, consistent validation in her relationship with Dennis. And Dennis was completely the opposite. He was avoidant, inconsistent, and he couldn't handle the pressure. He just couldn't handle the closeness or the responsibility of the expectations, and he actually had set himself up to fail, or she set him up to fail. Um, what happens in the brain when an individual feels lonely? That is something we will discuss in the next video. Until then, I'd like you to do this exercise. Number one, write in your journal, do you feel lonely? Number two, out of the factors that I have mentioned, which apply to you? Number three, what coping mechanisms do you use for loneliness? Journal in your book and also put in your comment box. Watch my next video here. And if you've learned something useful today, like it, share it, tell it. Tell it to all the people you know. Thank you for watching.